Hey all, looks like you get a bit of a bonus today. I'm, I've been working to try to figure out these codecs. Um, for the past six months I've been dealing with video that's had kind of like poor frame rates on a lot of artifacts when I move things around like this. You know, you'll see it like glitch out for a few seconds. I've been trying to get rid of that and figure out what's going on and I'm, I've changed the codec so maybe this will fix it. This is just kind of a test really. But I'm going to show you quickly some satellite images. This is uh, if you go to this website, worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov, they've got a really neat polar orbiter viewer. And this is not from the NOAA satellites, but from the NASA Aqua, Terra, and uh, a new Finnish satellite from Finland. They tend to pass over the same place on Earth about the same time every day. Usually it's Terra first. Let me undo this. Yeah, so there's... This is Terra coming up. This hits usually at about uh, 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning, and it's the image still isn't up. Then Aqua comes in after that, and that hits at about maybe 12, maybe. And then the finished satellite is a little bit later, probably about maybe 1 or 2, I think. So if you look at the finished one, you'll see things a little bit more built up if you're looking for storms and that kind of thing. So what do we got here? I'm going to pan this out to the west coast. Looks like a lot of unstable cloud activity across the San Joaquin Valley. Got a frontal system coming on shore, and I'm not sure exactly where it was at this time, but it might have been something like that. So, jet stream would be paired up with that, kind of like this, or I think it might have been a little bit more like that. So a lot of fast jet stream energy, and uh, that's caused a lot of turbulence and uh, unstable cloud forms in that area. And we can zoom this way in on the San Joaquin Valley, which is really neat. It's almost like working a spy satellite photo here. And you can see a lot of cumulus clouds. These are showery clouds in this unstable air behind the cold front. And more of it as you go north. And if you go offshore, yeah, there's even more unstable showery type clouds. And as you drift southward, you get into more stable type clouds. So we start picking up the trade wind inversion out in this area. And if we go further south, we start picking up the tropical stuff. That's going to be a little bit south of the equator at this time of year. But anyway, let me zoom in over to South America. Because they've had some storms going on. We can check those out. This is in Brazil right here. In fact, we can come over here and add the coastlines. Or the country boundaries. So let me see here. What are we looking at? Uh, I believe that's uh, Uruguay right there, and just north of there, Brazil. So we can zoom way in on these thunderstorms. And as that comes up, well, we see a lot of anvil activity. There's not really a whole lot to see, but we can back this up by switching to another satellite. So I'm going to back this up a couple hours and pull up the aqua satellite. And I don't know, is that earlier? I may be mistaken, maybe aqua comes in later. But I think uh, Terra is the first one, and yeah, there you can see it a little bit earlier during the day. And if you go in earlier, you can find the boundaries. You'll a lot of times see where those develop. And like a boundary would be right there. See a little ripple right there. And if you go even earlier in the day with like geostationary images, you'll probably see them all painted out through here, that kind of thing. So let's see, what else? Anything else to look for here? Got stable strata Q through this area. Go down to Uruguay, pretty much the same thing. And we got to remember it's uh, summertime down there. This is like July. No, it's, it's actually like August. So here we have a few thunderstorms going on there in Argentina. You can see the road network comes up, which is good, I guess, if you if you have chasers out there in Argentina going after this. But we'll run this up a little bit. I think the Finnish satellite is next. And it looks like we got some movement there. So they move to the east. You can see the back side of those towers. And then we bring up Aqua. What do we got here? Got a undo the finish imagery. Huh. 
Okay, looks like in this case Aqua is actually a little bit earlier. So there may be some overlap here. I'll have to look at this. Maybe a little bit of overlap between the Finnish and the Aqua satellite. So in this case we'd want to go from Aqua to the Finnish one. See that? Almost got a little bit of an animation there. It's pretty cool. That looks like maybe they're 30 minutes to 45 minutes apart. Well, anything else cool to look for? Well, there's some transverse bands right here, some mid-level out cumulus. That's indicative of some jet stream energy probably flowing across the Andes, which stretch like that, and then we get some lee side type cloud forms here. A lot more of it down here, so we're looking at probably some turbulence. And then we go south down to uh, Punta Arenas, and uh, do I got that right? And there's a city down here that starts with U. I forgot that. But yeah, they're in their austral summer. Go even further south, and then we've got Antarctica. And the satellites don't pick up Antarctica too well, the way this is mapped. Uh, they do make passes over the poles, but it doesn't work well with this Mercator-type projection. And besides, there's not a, not a whole lot to see unless you've got uh, some multispectral imagery or some good cloud shadowing going on. Let's see, what else do we got? Look at the big picture here. Let me undo the coastlines. Look at that intertropical, intertropical convergence zone. There you go. Just south of the equator. The equator is going to run about like this, maybe a little further north. So that, that ITCZ is just south of the equator, which we would expect this time of year. And in that zone, this is where the winds are sort of like flowing over like uh, periods of days and weeks into the band where there's the maximum solar heating. The sun is kind of like beating down like around here, and then there's a little bit of lag as the ITC CZ tries to follow the sun. And so we get, you know, the band just a little bit south of the equator between there and the uh, where the sun is beating down. And in that, we've got lots of thunderstorms and showers that spring up, and then later in the day, they dissipate, and then you get a lot of overnight cloud, a lot of stratocumulus and outcumulus overnight. And the place that gets the most thunderstorm activity in the world is this region right here in the eastern Congo. This is uh, where the silverback gorilla habitats are, lot of rainforest type stuff. And it's very high terrain, so you get a lot of topographic interactions. And they get something like, uh, I think, maybe 300 thunderstorm days a year or something like that. And there they are. You can see the storms there. And thanks to this good imagery, we can really zoom in on that. Might have to back this up a little bit earlier because we're picking up, picking up a lot of cloud material, like a lot of seriform stuff and go even further back. So there we go. This is when the, the activity is first starting to develop in, during the day. So here we can really pick out the boundaries if, if you're chasing in the Congo or something like that. Uh, I don't really see any boundaries here, to be honest. Uh, a lot of times they tend to follow rivers where you get very strong evaporations and the wetlands and that kind of thing. So Anyway, it's hard to tell exactly where these are forming along, but of course a couple hours later, boom, there they go. Thunderstorms everywhere. So it didn't take long for those to get going. In fact, it looks like it's this line right here that fired those off. Probably some sort of easterly wave moving through here. And then as that moves westward, yeah, th that looks about right. They march westward. So if you're forecasting for the Congo, good chance of thunderstorms here later in the day. That's some pretty decent movement right there. The yeah, Finnish satellite is right around the same time, so... That would be about the last image for the day. Anyway, I'm going to close this up and see if how this recorded. Hopefully we've got some good footage here.